Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes and today well I'm gonna teach you guys how to f how to complete the mission marathons any mission marathon you could possibly ever think of I will teach you how to do it today that way I can only make one video and cover all bases so anyway let us get started well I'm gonna be using the vampire mission marathon because the vampire missions essentially have every mission Wargaming will ever possibly do there's really not going to be any other possible way that they could uh, give us missions. The vampire missions are long and very, very difficult. So, even for me, like it's, if, if you don't have the right plan, it could be quite tricky. But I will give you guys the best advice I could possibly give you guys um, in tricks to completing those missions. Uh, before we start, though, I would like to ask you guys to share the video between your World of Warplanes clan mates or um, friends. Just please help get the channel out because it's going to be really hard to gain any traction uh, since I was gone for such a long time. So if you guys could help me and just kind of uh, spread the word, I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, these videos I really do want to help you guys out so please do share it and get the message out so without further ado let us begin on the vampire mission if there's a couple repeats I'll kinda just skip over them um, but I'll try to give you guys pointers to completing any of these missions because there are tricks to completing every single one of these missions so without further ado let us begin Win at least one battle. Okay, you guys can figure that out. <laughs> Just play a plane that you think that you have the best luck in, that you're the best at, and it won't be hard. Um, earn at least 800 capture points for destroying ground targets in any number of battles. This, you generally would want to play either a ground pound or a bomber, obviously. And you only points or capture points earned for destroying t ground targets actually count so make sure you're destroying ground targets and by destroying ground targets they don't mean each individual little section of the ground target you have to destroy the entire cluster um, you don't you don't have to necessarily be the one to destroy every single part of the structure you just have to be the one that destroys the last part of the structure so if like a previous a different GA or bomber had destroyed all but one section of the ground target in that cluster if you destroy that last one you get points for it so just keep that in mind when you're doing it that's how you get the capture points it's not too hard um, earn at least 35,000 personal points for any no in any number of battles just play the game you'll get it Earn Winged Legend, again, just play a plane that you think you're, you're pretty good at. Uh, 14,000 personal points isn't bad. Do basically anything you could possibly think of doing in the game will earn you personal points, so just go ahead and do that. The Akamatsu Medal. The Akamatsu Medal is earned for, or awarded for earning 400 capture points in one sortie in a light fighter. So capture points well okay let's first start by saying it doesn't have to be your first sortie it just has to be any sortie you have to get 400 capture points and capture points despite the name can be earned both attacking and defending sectors um, capture points are earned for destroying ground targets for destroying air defense planes or destroying enemy planes over either a controlled sector or an enemy controlled sector. If it's an allied controlled sector sector that you're killing the planes, you have to make sure that the sector has lost some points on the screen so it's you can't have like um it can't be injured. It it can't be weakened. The sector cannot or the sector can't be at full strength. So if a plane had gotten, um, if one of your allied planes had died over there, and you know the 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 sector isn't fully strength at full strength, then you would get points for it. Um, 
you know, like that little circle that shows the strength of the sector, it has to be injured at at least a little bit in order to get capture points. If it is injured at all, you get full capture points for it. As far as I'm aware, that's what I've been told. However, I think sometimes, even if it is at full strength and you're defending it, you'll be fine. Um, attacking sectors, it's not an issue. And just make sure if you're destroying enemy planes over an enemy sector or an allied sector, they have to be in the zone in order to actually count. If they've flown outside the boundaries of the sector, it does not count. So that's not too bad. Remember Akamatsu, 400 capture points, one sortie, light fighter. Right, the next one, destroy at least 20 sections of ground targets. This one should be really easy. Um, it's just, it's not a cluster of ground targets. It's just every single little target on the ground counts as it. So each cluster usually has about anywhere between four and like ten sections of ground targets. So you just destroy a little bit and you'll be fine. Earn at least 1,000 capture points for destroying aerial targets in any number of victorious battles. Remember, capture points are only earned over sectors. So destroying targets that are not in any zone do not count. And also just make sure it's a win, otherwise it doesn't count. So we already kind of covered capture points. You can get attacking or defending. Just make sure that they are over either an allied or an enemy sector in order to count. Destroy at least 15 enemy multi-rolls over any number of victorious battles. Um, just headhunt multi-rolls or just kind of play willy-nilly and you'll get it eventually. It's not too bad. Destroy at least three enemy heavy fighters in a single battle. Uh, just note that this one, uh, enemy heavy fighters, means not air defense. Air defense planes do not count. You have to shoot down um, heavy fighters from the enemy team list. They can be controlled by bots. They just have to be li listed in the enemy team list in order to count. Um, so that's not too bad. It's really not too hard to, f to do that. Maybe fly a heavy fighter in order to counter them or like a Mustang or you know something like that. It's not too hard. Lang Metal. I'm pretty sure Lang Metal is for ground pounders. Uh, you have to destroy 15 ground targets, I believe. But let me double check. Uh, the Lang Metal right here. Yep, 15 enemy ground targets in one sortie in winning the battle. It doesn't have to be your first sortie. It just has to be any sortie. Um, if you die, it just resets it. It resets your progress. So, and of course, uh, ground targets means the entire group of ground targets, not just one little part of the ground target, not one little bit of the cluster. You have to destroy the entire cluster in order to get points for that. Um, I suggest uh, flighting up with somebody that's competent and then going and destroying only AA mounts because AA mounts give you the least amount of capture points and therefore you're able to get more ground targets destroyed per sector so that's my strategy and also if you see a lot of planes over a sector ignore it wait for a different sector to open up an opportunity um, you don't want to get yourself killed because it resets your progress, of course. This one is not too bad if you have the right plane. Uh, GA are definitely more viable than bombers. However, if you have the high tier bombers, you're pretty good with that one too. Soviet bombers might be a little bit tricky because they they uh, thrive while being shot at. So probably not Soviet bombers, but German bombers especially the high tier ones and German GA especially the high tier ones are your best bet for that okay I gotta figure out which one we were just on uh, I'm pretty sure it was a cockpit um, right was it Akamatsu where'd it go did I click on the wrong one last time Hmm. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, here we go. There we go. This looks a little bit better. <laughs> Alright, that one is... We just did Lang. 
Alright, next one. Participate in capturing at least five sectors in any number of battles. This one isn't too bad. Um, I suggest doing a bomber or GA or heavy fighter because they are faster. Or at least the high tier German ones are faster. But heavy fighters can get to sectors quicker. So they're probably your best bet. But I mean, this can be done in basically any plane. It's not too bad. Uh, I'll, again. One little trick for getting credited for taking a sector is, well, okay, if it's neutral, all you have to do is destroy one air defense plane or destroy one ground target or destroy one enemy plane over the sector, and as long as your team is the one to flip that neutral sector, at any point in the battle, you get credit for the sector. Um... If the enemy team flips it, you don't get credit for the sector. Now, that's pretty self-explanatory. A trick for this, though, is if the enemy team does flip it, all you have to do, do is destroy one air defense plane or destroy one ground target and leave. Because as long as that, flip, or that sector gets flipped at any point in the battle, you'll get credit for it. And, of course, the enemy team can't flip it again so because it's already in their possession so if it's an enemy sector just destroy an enemy plane an enemy air defense plane or a ground target over the sector all you have to do is one and then you can leave and you'll, as long as that f sector gets flipped at some point in the battle you get credit for it so that's a little little trick um, to get a lot of sectors in one battle and especially like if you have a couple of garrisons right next to your um, base your bots will almost always flip that immediately. So as long as you go over there and do something to help flip the sector, you get credit for it. And then you can, you don't even have to wait till they flip it. You can just kind of leave and uh, hope they flip it eventually. And they almost always do. So that's a little trick too. 100 capture points, any number of victorious battles. We already talked about that. Um, again, go back and look at the earlier parts of the video if you're not sure about that. 35,000 hit points of damage to aerial targets in any number of battles. My best suggestion for that is to, number one, play high tiers because there's more hit points on every plane. And number two, fly heavy fighters and attack bombers in GA because at tier 10, uh, an IL-40P has like 1,700 hit points or something. And... They, yeah, they have a lot of hit points. So even if you were to destroy like t you know ten of them or something, you'd be pretty close, if not already there. I, I can generally get this in one or two battles. If you focus down GAs and uh, um, bombers, and aerial targets means anything that flies that's not on your team counts. So air defense, bomber flights, enemy planes, they all count. Part four. Destroy at least eight enemy aircraft in a single battle while defending sectors. This one, you got to make sure the enemy plane is in a sector that you control, and you also have to make sure that the lock on the sector is gone. So um, when you flip a sector, there's about a 25 second cooldown before um, the air defense planes and the ground targets spawn. You you don't get credit for killing a plane while defending unless your air defense are active and the ground targets are spawned you know so after you flip a sector you have to wait about 25 seconds for that to happen and once that happens then you can do it so um, just be aware of that um, it shows the little timer in the top above that sector um, but also on the top of the screen where it shows lists all the sectors, it puts a little lock on it, and you gotta wait for that timer to go away. And once the timer's gone, then it's free game. Um, if you're not sure where to find that, just look to see if allied air defense planes are spawned, or if you have allied ground targets on the ground. If those two things are active, then you get credit for um, getting enemy aircraft while defending. So. That one's not too bad. Fly something that's very maneuverable, 
Um, probably a Spitfire would be a good pick for that. Or any good turn fighter. Um, heavy fighters can be because you'll have GAs and bombers trundling in. And heavy fighters can kill them very quickly. Really, the main thing about this is just play a plane that you are very comfortable in and you should be okay with this mission. And you just watch for the lock. Make sure the lock is gone. Kazab dub metal is for destroying five enemy aircraft. Enemy aircraft means anyone on the on the enemy team panel. You have to kill five of them after the squall line. After no more respawns are available. Um, that one's not too bad, unless you never reach um, the squall line. So here's a suggestion for that one. If you get a bot game don't flip sectors because your bots will always win almost always your bots will win without you even trying like I've had so many battles where I literally just go AFK intentionally to see if we win and we win by supremacy almost every time there are occasions when it's not but in those instances you can always go and flip sectors the goal is to keep the battle as even as possible as long as possible so try to maintain two and three sectors if it's a five sector map um, and alternate back and forth so that the the point counter stays right in the same if you get a map with factories it can be a lot more difficult because factories give you a lot of points and so the battles usually don't last as long so don't capture the factory or go over and just prevent the enemy bots from flipping it um, you want to try to keep that mil that factory um, neutral as long as possible that's your main goal so the less the, or the fewer sectors each team captures the longer the battle will last thus increasing your chances of reaching squall line thus increasing your chances of getting the cause of dub metal keep that in mind um, it's not too hard to get but it can be really really frustrating to try to get sometimes um, just fly something you're really good at I guess destroy at least seven enemy aircraft while defending sectors over any number of battles that one's a lot easier because it's less than the other mission and you can do it in any number of battles instead of just one if you're not sure go check earlier part of the video 150,000 damage to ground targets over any number of victorious battles again bombers GA high tier give you more points um, the highest the higher the tier you have the more hit points every ground target has thus decreasing the amount of time it takes to complete that mission moving on destroy at least five enemy fighters in any number of victorious battles okay this is any number of battles so that one's not too bad if it was in one battle it would really suck but it's not that bad um, earn at least 5,000 personal points for destroying ground targets in a single battle again we already talked about that um, but this one is basically a really really easy one if you have a, any halfway decent bomber or GA this is a cakewalk to complete. Uh, McCampbell medal. I'm pretty sure I know what that is, but let me double check just to make sure. McCampbell medal is. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, should be under. Oh, there it is. McCampbell awarded for destroying at least ten aerial targets in one sortie and winning the battle. Aerial targets means any plane that flies that's not on your team. It could be a bomber flight. It could be an ADA it can be um, that so let me just double check just to distinguish it aerial targets when when the game uses aerial targets it's anything that flies at all that you, that is not on your team so it can be neutral it can be bomber flights it can be ADA it can be enemy planes anything that flies that's not on your team counts um, if it's an enemy plane if it, if it says enemy targets it's anyone on the um, enemy team list um, that's how the wording of these missions are just so that you guys can differentiate so 10 aerial targets this makes it a lot nicer it doesn't say enemy planes and so you can so air defense planes do count and bomber flights do count so it's actually quite nice 10 aerial targets in one sortie in winning the battle so again it doesn't have to be your first sortie it just has to be any sortie 
Um, just know that if you die, it resets your progress, of course. Ten air targets, one sortie, winning the battle, and the destroy targets can include air, must include aircraft of all five types. Fighter, multi-role, bomber, heavy fighter, and GA. Again, bomber flights count, so if you have a bomber flight and you want to kill it, one of those also counts. Um, heavy fighter and light fighter air defense also count, so we'll go ahead and shoot those. And of course, enemy planes also count. That one's not too bad. Heavy fighters are probably your best bet because they can deal with bomb bombers a little bit easier, but any plane's basically good for that one. And I can go click on Vampire again. Where did I end? I think it was this one. Nope, next one. Okay, so that's the McCampbell Medal. S stage 5. Earn the Avalanche requ or achievement the required number of times. 2. I don't remember what Avalanche is. Avalanche is... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh... Say it. Huh? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here's Avalanche. Awarded for destroying at least five enemy ground targets in the first sortie. So if you die without getting this, that's not great. So this one really is not bad. Um, five enemy ground targets in the first sortie. Again, just go after AA mounts because they count and they don't give you many points or capture points so you're able to get a lot of them killed without flipping the sector making that mission extraordinarily easy. Well, let's go back here. Wait, where oh, wrong one again. Ugh. Okay. So that's avalanche. You have to do it twice, not hard. Uh, the expert pilot. Oh, dang it. Gotta go back. Alright, so expert pilot is listed. Just so you guys know, if you're on the mission and you mouse over the achievement, it'll tell you. But because I'm, I'm, I'm on my, uh, I am on my brother's account, and he, that's the only way I can look at these missions. That I already completed them on my account. So, um, but just keep that in mind. If you're on a mission, and you don't know what the achievement is, and you don't know where to find it in this achievement tab, just mouse over it, it will tell you. That being said, let's look at the expert pilot. Expert pilot, awarded for achieving one of the top three ranks in the combat group in two victorious battles in a row. That means, at the end of the battle, you have to be either first, second, or third in terms of personal points earned and chevrons earned. It, it, in order to get the ranks, it ranks you first by how many chevrons you have, and secondly by how many personal points you have. So it goes from uh, grade 5 to grade 4 to grade 3 to grade 2, and then Hero of the Sky, or grade 1. Um, and so it ranks you first by that. So if both player, if you have two players that have Hero of the Sky, actually, if you have one person that has Hero of the Sky and the other person has four chevrons, the Hero of the Sky will be first, and the one that has four chevrons will be number two, regardless of how many personal points they have. And number two, if they have the same ranking, so they're let's say they're both here of the sky, it puts the person with the more personal points above the other. So that's just how the ranking system works. Uh, all you have to do is be first, second, or third on your team, and you have to do this um, two battles in a row. Really not that hard. Fly a plane that you enjoy. Very, very, very easy. But that's the mechanics of the of the system. Earn at least 10,000 personal points for destroying aerial targets. Again, aerial targets means any plane. Earn the Lambert Medal achievement. Oh, for personal points as well, just note that GAs and bombers give you more personal points than um, light fighters and multi rolls because they have more hit points. Just putting that out there. Next one, Lambert Medal. This one isn't hard at all. Actually, never mind. It, it, it can't be tricky. Um, but it's the same as the Akamatsu, but just for 
uh, multi rolls instead. So you have to get 400 capture points in one sortie. It does not have to be your first sortie. And, and yeah, that's it. Capture points. Remember, you get it for destroying ground targets, enemy planes, ADA, as long as they're over a sector that you either control or the enemy controls and the lock is not on. If the uh, sector is locked, you don't get them. If you do that three times, yeah, that one's a real jerk to get. Lambert isn't too hard getting it once, but getting it three times in a row just sucks. But you'll get it eventually. It's not too bad. If you don't, just use tokens. But Ephemov Metal, same as Lambert in Ak Akamat Ak Akam Why can I not say that word? Akamatsu Metal, but it's for GA. And this one, it's only for ground targets. So the capture points that you earn only count toward the metal if they were ground targets. So shooting down air defense planes or planes on your tail do not count. You have to destroy ground targets for it to work. 400 capture points, GA, play tier 10 German uh, ground pounder if you have it. It's very simple. has to be a ground pounder. It has to be a GA. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Next one, earn at least 1,750 capture points for destroying aerial targets any number of victorious battles. Again, aerial targets, you know the, the language, that one's pretty simple. Takes a while, don't get me wrong, it does take a while, because the most you'll really get is about 500 to 600 per battle, so that's a best case scenario. Generally, it might take you about 10 battles, anywhere between like 5 to 10 battles. Earn at least 70,000 personal points. Any number of battles. Again, that just takes a lot of time. Destroy at least 80 aerial targets when attacking sectors. Again, aerial targets. Um, a, and also, it's while attacking sectors. So you have to attack um, either a neutral sector or an enemy sector. Um, and destroying air defense planes over it counts and also destroying enemy planes over it counts. Um, my best guess would be use he using heavy fighters because they can get to sectors a lot faster, but really any plane works for that. Flying Raider Badge. Uh, let's find the Flying Raider Badge. Uh, oh, here it is, okay. Max effectiveness in fulfilling the aircraft specific mission sector attack. Okay, I think this one is for multi rolls or heavy fighters. I I'm pretty sure you can do it in most planes. I'm pretty sure light fighters, multi rolls, and um, heavy fighters all count. But I'm not positive. Really, the main thing is if you go into battle and you hold the tab key, it pops up a little menu and it'll have three little progress bars at the bottom. If you if one of them says sector attack, that's the one you want to go for. Um, and sector attack, I'm pretty sure, just requires you to get five sectors captured in one battle. Um, that one's not too bad as long as you know what kind of plane you have to do it in. Um, I'm going to leave a video from VBAT's channel where he has like a little document for um, the requirements of those kind of missions because sometimes it's difficult to figure out which type of plane you have to fly to get it. So I'll leave a link down to his video on achievements for that um, and that way you can look and know exactly what it is. But for the most part that's what it is. Uh, you have to do it 10 times, so yeah, that one's going to take a while, but whatever. Kazub Dub, again, 5 kills after Squall. Um, if you're not sure, look at the earlier part of the video. Win 3 battles, easy. 15 enemy bombers. Enemy bombers means from the enemy team list. Bomber flights don't count. Uh, conquer, let's look at Conquer. What's Conquer? Uh, so many dumb missions. I, I don't like figuring out what some of these are. 
Okay, you have to earn at least 450 capture points in a single battle. So, like, the epic ones, you have to do 400 capture points in one sortie. This one, you have to do 450 points in one battle. That one's really not too bad. Remember, capture points are only earned over sectors. It could be either allied or enemy. Um, you have to do it twice. Guardian, you need 400 capture points. Point. Let me double check. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's not 400. It's like 200 or something. What's Guardian? Awarded for earning at least 250 capture points over for destroying enemy aircraft flying over a sector under the, under the control of the player's combat group. So you have to destroy enemy planes that are in your controlled sector. That's pretty self-explanatory. I mean. That's the only kind of plane that's going to be in your sector anyway. <laughs> um, just make sure the lock is gone, because if the lock on the sector is not gone, it doesn't count. Ace, you have to get 20 kills in one battle. My, it, It's aerial targets. No lingo. Or if you know the lingo, it's just any plane. Um, Ace, 20 aerial targets in one battle fly a plane that you enjoy really and don't flip sectors like get a battle where it's kind of just mostly bots or whatever and just sit at their spawn if you really want and just camp them out like at tier 4 and stuff it's pretty simple to get ace if you just camp their spawn and don't flip sectors you want the battle to last as long as you can Earn at least a thousand capture points for destroying ground targets. Again, we already talked about that. Destroy at least fifteen enemy bombers. Enemy bombers, enemy team. Any number of battles. Uh, not the bomber flight. Rocketeer. Okay. Five times. That means you have to kill an enemy or, or you have to destroy an aerial target. Aerial target. Aerial target. Um, with a rocket. Um, you have to do that ten times, oh gracious. But, okay, the best planes to use for this are the F-94, because it's got some great air-to-air -air rockets. Alternatively, any of the bat wings. Uh, the BVP-210, BVP-2203, and BVP-215-02 are great picks. If you don't have those high-tier ones, the best low tier one would be, okay, you can't do the I-16E because it's tier 3, but the I-16L does work. These ones actually work pretty well against air targets, so do that and also make sure you put a pilot skill of Rocketeer. It makes it a lot easier to get Rocketeer, but any of those planes, um, pretty simple. Either get right up on the tail of an attack aircraft or bomber and nuke them with those rockets, or go head to head with something and hopefully kill them. It's not too hard if you have the right plane. Um, the I-16L is not as great, but it's one of the low tier ones that um, it's really easy to, for anyone to get if if you don't have another option. Otherwise, try to get the Starfire, the F-94 Starfighter, or the bat wings or both it's very simple um, so yes it'll take a while but it's actually not that bad if you have the right plane where was I do little metal it's the same as the Akamatsu the Efimov the Lambert metal all those ones it's the same as that but for bombers um, and it only counts for ground targets destroyed so Anything you destroy with your tail gun or front guns, if you have them, uh, don't count. You have to destroy ground targets. 400 capture points and one sortie. This mission really, 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 really sucks. And if you're going to skip any, it'd probably be the Doolittle, unless you have a really good premium bomber, or if you have one of the high-tier German bombers. Those ones are the best for Doolittle. Uh, remember, it's one sortie. You can die. It just resets your progress. You have to do 400 capture points in one sortie. Golubev medal is similar to Rocketeer, but you have to get three Rocketeer achievements in one sortie. 
So that's a little bit tricky. And also you have to win the battle. Yeah, that's that's real fun. Um unless you have one of the high tier um rocket special planes, it's gonna be very difficult. If you have the Starfire or any of the Bat Wings, you'll be okay on that mission. The I sixteen L, while possible, will be extraordinarily difficult. Um, it can be done, uh, but this actually is quite tricky to get if you don't have the right tools. Otherwise, it's not too bad. Destroy at least 75 sections of ground targets in any number of battles. Sections, remember it's uh, anything on the ground. It doesn't have to be clustered. It just has to be each individual part of the cluster counts as one. Win at least five battles, pretty obvious. We're on the final stretch now. Participate in capturing at least 50 sectors. That'll take a while, but doable. Hero of the Sky three times. I personally suggest high tier GA because it's the most consistent. Hero of the Sky, I get about 75% of the battles or even higher. Like Probably more like 80, 85% of the battles I have Hero of the Sky in that plane. It's, it's really, really easy. Um, that's my suggestion, but any plane counts. It, just play whatever you're good at, I guess. And Gabreski, one of the hardest medals in the game to get. You have to do quite a lot for it. Gabreski is... right here. Awarded for destroying at least 10 aerial... lingo... Uh, means any plane. Ten aerial targets and seven enemy ground targets. Enemy, not neutral. Enemy ground targets. It has to be controlled by the red team. In a single sortie, so you can die, it just resets your progress, and winning the battle. So winning is important. This one's difficult because number one, it's very specific, right? You have to destroy enemy ground targets, not neutral territory ground targets. And also, you have to get 10 air kills in one sortie. So your best bet for this are going to be planes that are very good at doing both ground pounding and air killing. What planes would those be? Well, I would suggest either... The Hunter is probably one of the pretty decent ones that are non-premium. That works pretty well. Um, some of the UK heavy fighters also, like the P228, would probably be pretty decent at that too. Um, but really, any of the British heavy fighters, pretty decent at that mission. Um, my personal go-to plane where I got a couple of Gabreski from, and my first Gabreski was actually the MEP 1102B. You basically headhunt bot GA. You really want bot GA on the enemy team, but you headhunt them, and anyone that gets on your tail, you can shoot them down. And of course, getting the ground kills, or ground kills is literally no problem whatsoever. Ever, ever, ever not hard. Um, so yeah, that one, that one's not too bad. Also, the uh, DO-335, because it's got twice the ordinance of a, the Tier 8 German bomber, or ground pounder. It, the ground, the Tier 8 German ground pounder gets two of those bombs. You get four of them, and they don't reload in that long of a time. So the DO-335, great option. But whatever plane you choose, don't go for the biggest targets. Just go for AA mounts, because they count as a ground kill. You need seven enemy ground kills. 10 air kills in one sortie. Can be a bit tricky, but it's not terrible. Um, is there anything else that would probably be pretty decent at it? I don't know. You really want planes that have a lot of ordnance, but also have the kill capacity. So, that's that. And um, there's actually one mission not on here that does come up on these mission marathons fairly frequently. Um, I'm actually surprised it's not on there, but it's kill five aerial targets um, with your tail gunner over the course of a battle. That one sucks. Um, 
I kind of had pretty good progress doing those ones with, again, the German Tier 10 ground attack plane. If you guys get anything from this video, note that you should get the Tier 10 German ground attack plane because it's so, so versatile at getting so many of these missions done. So if you're going to get any plane in the game, this one will probably be the most useful for these mission marathons. I'm just saying um, it makes your life a lot easier for some of these. So essentially what you would do with this plane again you're going after GA you would knock them down to about 200 hit points you fly in front of them and then you blast them to you just tear them apart with your tail gunner until they die um, try not to set them on fire because if a fire kills them it doesn't count it has to be your your tail gunner to kill it in order for it to count you have to get five kills so that one's a pretty decent plane to do it in but also another good option. I personally haven't done it because I didn't have the SE100 till just this weekend. Um, the SE100 also is great. It's got this really, really devastating 20 mil uh, turret that would make that a lot easier. Um, that's probably the best plane of the game to do it, really. So if you're going to buy any premium plane, um, this is the one you want to buy really because it's strong and fun but also it helps you get those really difficult missions done so like I said most of these missions aren't bad none of these missions are impossible they really aren't but they take a lot of time a lot of time it took me about two or three weeks of just straight up grinding for it to finally get it um, it's, it's a lot it takes a lot of effort on your part um, but really, it applies to any of these mission marathons. Once you know the tricks, the mechanics of the game, it's not too bad. And it's the reason why collecting so many planes in this game is just useful. And knowing um, how to play most of the planes in the game not only gives you an advantage in combat, because you'll know their weaknesses, but it also helps you complete these missions, because you have the right tools to get the job done rocket kills if you don't have a rocket plane it makes it very difficult oh one other thing the rocket kill is also very great in the 262 but anywho that's really about it um yeah the, again the mission the missions aren't hard if you have the right planes but that's the problem not everyone has all the planes and so it makes it very very difficult or they're not very good in certain types of planes um, so any of them can be skipped with tokens but you want to try to avoid spending tokens on it as much as possible because it can get very very expensive um, but there's always that option as well so I hope this video helped um, if it did help you with a specific plane mission whether it be the vampire or one of the other mission marathons please do let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any questions about the wording of a specific mission that you're working on or tips and tricks to beating specific missions that maybe are going to be in a later mission marathon but not in the vampire one let me know and I will try to help you in the comments even if it didn't really help you Please leave a comment in the section, or the comment section below, because um, communication with the community, community interaction, is what drives this channel. Um, and it drives me. It's what gets me to make these videos. So if it actually was quite beneficial to you, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to have a conversation, and because that's what fuels this channel. It really is. So please leave comments, really, really like comments, and I will catch you guys next time.